I'll be there for you, I promise. I'm gonna get that thing done, I swear it. You ever said that to somebody else or something like that? Then Jesus has a word for both you and me today. So roll that introduction. Happy Wednesday, everybody, and uh, warmest greetings in the name of Jesus. We're reading our way through the Sermon on the Mount, and today we're in uh, chapter 5, verse 33 through 37. And this is a very short antithesis in which Jesus talks about how we uh, say yes and no. Jesus said, Again, you've heard it was said to those of the ancient times, You shall not swear falsely but carry out the vows that you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, don't swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And don't swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no, Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This is a, an interesting little tidbit from the Lord, but it reveals much when we open it up. Uh, I was reminded when I was reading that this week of a, of a movie that, uh, a remake of a movie, The Count of Monte Cristo, the, the most recent one starring Jim Caviezel, uh, the, the character Edmond Dantes in uh, being wrongfully accused, sent off to prison, escaping. He comes across a band of pirates. He's uh, forced to skirmish with one of them, and instead of killing him, he spares the man's life. And when all has been resolved, the man that he has spared, Jacobo, grabs him by the shirt and looks at him and says, I swear by my dead relatives, and even the ones that aren't feeling too good, I am your man forever. There's a little bit of humor and levity involved in that scene, but it drives home a point that we have all uh, felt from time to time that we really need to bring an emphasis to what we're saying. We, we really want to convince people of our sincerity. We, we want them to, uh, to understand that we're going to be there for them. But Jesus, in talking to, uh, to his uh, disciples and to, to all who were listening, was saying that the, the the making of a promise to somebody is only a down payment on faithfulness. When we say to somebody, I'll be there for you, we've only given 5% of the sweat that needs to go into it. The other 90 to 95%, it consists of actually following through and of actually being there, of actually doing the thing that we said we'd do. Now, rules and laws and little customs had grown up around uh, the Jewish faith by the time that Jesus came along. Later on in the Gospel of Matthew, he will speak to the scribes and the Pharisees about the, the hypocrisy uh, of some of their customs. They had a, a word that they would use. They would lay their hand a hold of something uh, that belonged to them and say, this is Korban, and that meant that it was pledged to God forever. And Jesus is saying, you're using this notion of Korban to get out of having to fulfill other vows. Like you'll say to your parents, I can't give that to you because it's Korban. It's already been promised to the Lord. And Jesus is saying, so in keeping this custom of Korban, you are nullifying the command of Moses to honor our father and mother. And he says, there's a lot of other things that you do like that. When we start splitting hairs or making fine points or, or elaborating the laws and the customs around what it means to be faithful to Christ, we get into all kinds of trouble because God already knows our heart. And you can promise to another human being convincingly that you'll be there for them. But if deep down in your heart, you know that you really can't, God knows that too. You got to follow through. So the people had kind of come to let themselves off the hook from time to time by saying, if I pledge this to the Lord, then I have to follow through. And as long as I follow through on what I've pledged to the Lord, I can be considered faithful. And Jesus says, don't even make the, f the pledge in the first place. 
Why would you need to announce in the hearing of many other people what you intend to, to do for God? Just go do it. The, the trouble really is, the challenge, the struggle that we have as human beings is that we want to be generous and we want to be faithful and we want to be magnanimous. Many of us truly do. But we have this capability of promising more than we can deliver. All of us do it. We promise more money than we can deliver. And so we end up borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, and I promise I'll pay it back until we're so swamped that we can't pay anything back. We promise more of our time than we can deliver. And so those who make the most noise, our, our boss who threatens to fire us or whoever else, gets our time, and often it's our loved ones, our, our spouses, our children, our grandchildren, who, who are losing out. We overpromise all the time. And Jesus is saying that making a show of our promises isn't going to let us off the hook. What we really need to do is to live a more simple life. This word of Christ is a call to simplicity. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. It doesn't need any further elaboration. What if the church were the kind of creature here on earth that simply by the way it lived every day, simply by watching how Christians operate every day, everyone else would know that we were people who kept our word. They wouldn't need any further explanation. They know that when you say yes, you're going to show up, and you don't need to swear it. They know that when you say no, that you mean nothing by it. It's just that you don't have anything else to give. What if we actually lived that way? and didn't have to explain ourselves, and didn't have to justify ourselves, and, and puff ourselves up and make ourselves feel better. We would be so much more at peace. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Anything more complicated than that, anytime you feel like you need to grab somebody and say, I swear by your dead relatives, or even the ones that aren't feeling too good, I am your man forever. That's not, that's not of Christ. Just live simply in this world. And when you're out of money or out of time, tell people, I got no more. I'll see you when I do. That's the word of Christ for us today. Don't swear by anything. Just follow through on what you intend to do. Let's be in prayer. Oh God, we ask and pray with all of our hearts that you help us to become those simple people who, when we open our mouths, say simply to others, yes or no. And we know that that comes from a pure heart. Lord, help us to be men and women of our word without needing elaboration, without needing uh, flowery descriptions of all that we intend to do. Help us, God, to be those who follow through, who show up, who consistently live and who are able to say yes or no with clean and clear hearts. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, it's Wednesday. I'm hoping I see some of you in just a few hours. Uh, uh, from noon to one today, we're going to be collecting food for our lunch program. And I'm looking forward. I'll have a mask on, but I'm looking forward to waving at you in the window of your car. Um, it'll be contactless. We'll pick the things out of your car for you, and we'll take care of getting them to where they need to be. And if you drive by, God bless you for that. If you can't today, don't worry about it. Your no is no, and I don't even need to know why. Uh, in the meantime, remember to wash your hands. Remember to uh, read a psalm today and tell somebody that you love them. See you later.